Hi, it's Sherry. If this is your first time joining me, welcome to Canterbury Cottage. And if you are one of my loyal subscribers, welcome back. I am so excited for today's video because I am collaborating with two of my all-time favorite ladies on YouTube. Teresa of Our Green Acres and Julie of Julie's Designs and Signs. I'm guessing that most of you already watch their amazing channels, but if not, you really must check them out. I promise you will not be disappointed. Today, we have teamed up to bring you 30 holiday thrift flips. We were each tasked to find 10 thrift store items for under $5 each and turn them into beautiful holiday decor. So if you are ready to see my 10 projects, let's get started. This first project is very inexpensive to make. I used a large oval picture frame, which I purchased at Goodwill for $3.99. I spray painted the frame black and cut out a piece of black poster board to cover the picture that had been glued to the particle board backing. I used glue stick to attach the poster board to the frame backing. I determined the dimensions and then designed and printed out a Christmas landscape on white vinyl on my Cricut machine. I used the Dollar Tree vinyl and it worked great. I applied it directly to the poster board, and then I reassembled the frame. For the next project, I picked up a red hardback book at the thrift store for a dollar, but you can also buy them at Dollar Tree. I used Goof Off to remove the title along the spine. I determined the size needed and then printed out images from a vintage Christmas book on cardstock. I opened the book to the middle and then using Mod Podge on the back of the images only, I adhered the images to the pages in the book. Be careful to use a light coat of Mod Podge any time you're gluing paper to paper. I weighed the pages down with a couple books and let the Mod Podge thoroughly dry. Using an X-Acto knife and a metal ruler, I cut a small square from the middle of one of the pages. I repeatedly went over my cut lines to remove little squares of paper. I repeated this process until I had created a nice size hole, about a third of an inch deep. I ran hot glue around the edges of the hole to hold it in place, and then I hot glued in some bottle brush trees and a Santa ornament. I poured some Mod Podge into the hole and spread it around and then sprinkled on fake snow. When the Mod Podge is dry, if some of your snow is loose, give it a coat of hairspray to hold it in place. When I bought this little table for $2.19, I thought I would use a paint treatment to make it look like birch wood, but then I decided to go in a different direction. I sanded the design off of the top and then gave it two coats of mineral chalk paint. I bought six sheets of scrapbook paper made to look like birch wood and I began cutting it out to decoupage to the flat surfaces of the table. To accurately cut out the shapes that I needed, sometimes I traced around the table leg, and other times I pressed the paper against the table to create an impression line that I could cut along. 
I applied Mod Podge both to the table and to the back of the scrapbook paper, and when applying it, I made sure to smooth out any air bubbles or wrinkles. When cutting out your pieces of paper, cut them out slightly larger than you think you'll need, because you can always cut the extra off later. In fact, I bought a new set of X-Acto knives because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of cutting in this video. But I prefer to use scissors when cutting off large pieces of paper. When the excess paper was removed, I smoothed the edges with a fine grit sandpaper. Then I applied a coat of white wax to the painted edges. I just lightly dabbed with a cloth to remove excess wax. To protect the paper, I lightly sprayed the table five separate times with a clear top coat. I wanted to create some winter wall art, so I picked up this framed piece for $3.29. I tore off the paper backing and pried up the staples holding the art in place. Then I removed the art and the sheet of glass so that I could easily repaint the frame. Because I was going to reuse the brown mat, I decided to paint the frame in dark brown paint as well. I applied two coats of truffle chalk paint, and then when the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with fine grit sandpaper. I applied antiquing wax to give the brown paint extra dimension. I printed out some winter botanical images on cardstock to fit the squares on the mat. I used a paper cutter to cut out the images because I wanted to make sure the edges were perfectly straight. I chose to attach the images to the mat using a good quality glue stick because Mod Podge tends to make cardstock bubble. For extra adhesion, I applied the glue stick both to the back of the image and to the squares on the mat. Unfortunately, when I went to reassemble the artwork in the frame, I broke the glass. So I reattached the artwork without the glass and then cleaned up the back of the frame by adhering some brown craft paper to the frame with glue stick. Without glass, I needed to apply Mod Podge to protect the paper images. I applied a very thin coat and crossed my fingers that the cardstock wouldn't bubble. Somebody had already used this $3 clock for a DIY project but I wasn't going to use the clock parts for my project at all. I painted the wood box with a couple coats of green chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the edges, and then I applied some white wax. I brushed it on and then lightly wiped off the excess with a rag. I removed the clock parts from the clock face, and then I printed out a vintage landscape image on cardstock in a size to cover the clock face. I adhered the vintage image over the clock face using a good quality glue stick. I cut the back off of a bristle brush tree and then hot glued it to the image along with a few tiny styrofoam snowballs. I sprayed the image and the tree with spray adhesive and then sprinkled on some white glitter. I hot glued a reindeer ornament inside the clock cabinet and then added some fake snow. I decided to drill a hole through the moon so that I could insert a Dollar Tree light. 
I reassembled the clock back to the cabinet, and then I hot glued the battery box to the back of the clock cabinet. I added a drop of hot glue in the drilled hole to make sure that my light stayed put. I decided to add some embellishments to the clock cabinet, including a sheet of paper cut from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer sheet music, which I covered with spray adhesive and glitter before gluing on to the clock. I picked up three glass shades at the Habitat Restore for a dollar each, and I thought they would look pretty with candles in them. I put them in a wood box that I already had and added an empty cardboard box for height. I hot glued three wooden curtain rings to the cardboard box for the glass shades to sit in. I added some packing styrofoam at each end so that the cardboard box wouldn't move around at all. Then I began adding pine branches that I had cut off of an old Christmas tree. The cardboard box held the branches just as firmly as styrofoam would have. Then I cut up a couple different Dollar Tree stems and added those for some variety. I also added a couple Dollar Tree jingle bells and tiny pine cones. I filled in empty spots first with pine cones from my yard and then with Spanish moss. I made a large bow and wired that to the jingle bells. I decided to sprinkle on a little fake snow. I found an old wood sign and painted it white, and then I printed out an image of a vintage Christmas postcard and decoupaged that to the front of the sign. I ran some black florist wire through the original holes in the sign and then attached it to the handle of the wood box. For the next project, I picked up some homemade bookends at Goodwill for a little over $2. I removed the teddy bears, which were attached with some pretty long nails. And then I gave the bookends a couple coats of white spray paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed the edges with some sandpaper. I measured the back of each bookend and printed out some vintage children's book covers to fit. To attach the images, I applied Mod Podge to the back of the bookend and to the back of the cardstock. I picked up two of these metal votive candle holders at Dollar Tree. And then I printed out additional children's book covers in sizes to fit the front, sides, and roof of the little metal houses. To adhere the images, I applied Mod Podge both to the metal house and to the back of the card stock. When the Mod Podge was dry, I cut off any extra paper with scissors or an X-Acto knife. For a little light to shine through, I used an X-Acto knife to cut out two of the windows. I lightly sanded the edges of the paper with fine grit sandpaper, and then, in true Putts House style, I applied spray adhesive to the houses and covered them with iridescent glitter. I hot glued the houses to the bookends, and then I drilled holes to hold some bottle brush trees and hot glued on some small figurines. I finished up the back of the bookends by sanding the edges of the paper and then applying spray adhesive and iridescent glitter to match the houses.
In a previous video, I showed you how to make snowmen out of glass salt and pepper shakers. Today, I'm going to show you how to make them out of the tall wood ones. I cut one shaker down to child size and then I painted all three with white chalk paint. To create scarves, I cut strips off of a Goodwill scarf and fold the edges over and glue them down with hot glue. I use a little strip of pom-pom garland to create earmuffs. I paint a small wood star orange and then cut off the tips with my miter shears to create carrot noses. I just use a black paint pen to draw on the eyes and mouth. I use super glue to glue on the nose and buttons. Then I just look around my craft room for tiny things that I can add as embellishments. When I saw this wood horse for $2.99, I grabbed it and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I sanded off all of the varnish and most of the stain with my orbital sander and then I hand sanded to try to get into the grooves. Then I restained it using antiquing wax. It was darker than what I really wanted so I went over it a second time, this time using white wax. I created a wreath out of a pine stem to go around the horse's neck and then I tied a little bell onto the wreath with some red ribbon. To create wheels, I cut four slices off of an old wood curtain rod and painted them with black chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed them a bit with some sandpaper and then super glued them to a scrap of wood I found in my garage. I painted the wood with some green chalk paint so that it wasn't the same color as the horse. I drilled a small hole in one end of the wood and inserted an eye hook and then tied some twine through the eye hook. I distressed the green paint a bit and then hot glued the horse to the piece of wood. I decided to add some bottle brush trees and a small sign to the wagon. For the sign, I used a tiny dowel rod and a miniature ornament from Walmart. I added a little bow to hide the hole in the ornament. I bought this snowman at Goodwill, but perhaps you have a ceramic figurine that could use some refreshing. I started by repainting his mittens and earmuffs in a softer green, and then I repainted the black of his hat because there were several scratches in the paint. I painted the scarf and the holly leaves around the bottom white because I was planning on covering those things up completely. I hot glued the edges of a piece of fabric over to create a scarf. Then I hot glued my fabric scarf over the ceramic scarf that I had painted white, arranging it to make sure that it was completely covered. I folded another thin strip of fabric to cover the band on his hat. I added some little pine stems to cover the holly leaves. I hot glued a small bird's nest in his mittens and then cut up some greenery from Dollar Tree to cover up the holly leaves that had been around the base. I applied spray adhesive and then covered him with iridescent glitter. I added a little bird and a little pine cone and some greenery to the nest and I was done.
Well, I hope you got some good ideas today for turning thrift store finds into beautiful holiday decor. And remember, if you want 20 more great ideas, head over to Teresa and Julie's channels. I have their videos linked in the description box below. Just click on my video title and the description box will open up. Well, that's all for today. Until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now.